Good morning. My name is Jathaniel, and I'm the pastor of Colonial Park United Methodist Church. On behalf of Colonial Park United Methodist Church, I want to welcome you and thank you so much for joining us this morning. Whether you're joining us through Facebook Live, YouTube Live, or our phone live stream, we are honored by your presence with us, and we are just overjoyed that you have decided to connect with us in worship this morning on this Ascension Sunday and Memorial Day weekend. Now, it is uh, Ascension Sunday where we celebrate and remember the ascension of Jesus into heaven, uh, leaving His disciples and giving them some work to do. And we're going to talk about that uh, over the course of our time together today. It is also Memorial Day, which is a big day in the life of our community and throughout our land. It's a day in which we remember members of our military who pay the ultimate price giving their life to maintain the freedom that we now enjoy as a nation, but particularly as a church here in this land. We are able to worship and express our religion freely as we're doing so this morning. And so we are grateful for the ultimate sacrifice paid by so many throughout the years and throughout the history of our nation. And so we pause and uh, as a community and as a country tomorrow to remember that sacrifice and appreciate uh, what they have done for us. And we are also grateful for all those who serve faithfully in our military and have throughout the years. Uh, today, just like every Sunday, you have an opportunity to do good simply by checking in on Facebook through our, through our partners at Causely. Uh, they have teamed us up with Vitamin Angels for the month of May. So if you want to help Vitamin Angels in their important work of distributing vitamins to underserved areas, helping children who are undernourished or malnourished, and, and saving essentially saving their life and leading them from disease by, by giving them much needed nutrition, you can do that this morning simply by checking in on Facebook at Colonial Park UMC, use the hashtag GiveVitamins. You can also tag our location uh, on Instagram using the same hashtag GiveVitamins and it will count as well toward our contributions toward uh, Vitamin Angels this month. I also want to remind you that we have the Emergency Mobile Food Pantry in partnership with the Mid-South Food Bank. That will be happening once again on June the 5th at Colonial Park United Methodist Church, 5330 Park Avenue. Uh, we'll be serving from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. If you are interested in being a part of the distribution team or the setup team on that morning or that day, uh, the hours will run before the 10 to 1, and the distribution team will be working from 10 to 1 and then helping clean up a little after. But we need, we're need we looking for about 30 people, so we have the opportunity for you to serve. All you have to do is connect with our Director of Outreach, Brian Manus, and let him know of your interest and how God has laid that on your heart, and He'll be happy to connect you in this service opportunity. It's a wonderful ministry, a wonderful opportunity, and a wonderful partnership uh, through the Mid-South Food Bank where we are able to help distribute uh, food for families who are experiencing food insecurity in our community. Every family gets a, uh, a load of food that, that covers a family of four for about two weeks. And so if you want to be a part of that, email Brian today, and that will be happening on June the 5th. Now, I invite you to pray with me as we continue our time and our connecting in worship this morning. Gracious God, we thank you and we praise you for this day. It's always wonderful to be able to gather together. Even as we gather together online, we are not able to be in person just yet. We know that we are connecting together and connecting with you today. And so as we do so, open our hearts and open our minds. We are reminded that we have our candle lit this morning, that it is a reminder of your Spirit's presence with us, that we are not just sitting here uh, listening or watching. We're not passive observers, but we are, are in heart, mind, and soul worshiping you and experiencing your Holy Spirit with us right now in this space. We also continue to have our scripture open. And remember, it's a reminder to us that you continue to speak with us. You continue to speak into our lives, that we open our, our, our Bible is also uh, an opening of our heart and our mind for you to speak your words of life into us today. And so as we do so, let us not forget uh, the men and women, our brothers and sisters throughout the years who have paid the ultimate price so that we can enjoy this freedom to come to you and come together as your church freely and unhindered. We give thanks for their sacrifice, for the love that they embodied, because you said no greater, no greater love has anyone that he or she would lay down their life for their brother or sister. And so we celebrate that love this morning, and we enjoy the freedom of that. And let us, let us take stock in what this freedom means for us in this day and time, particularly as we are seeking to follow you as faithful disciples of your Son, Jesus Christ. In our time today, speak with us, guide us, and be with us. And we pray these things in Christ's holy name. Amen. This world can be cold and bitter. It feels like we're in the 
is such a good father. So let all my life tell me And a wonder of your never-ending love And I'll let all my life tell me That you're wonderful and such a good father That you're wonderful and such a good Help me to love with open arms like you do. A love that erases all the lines and sees the truth. And though that when they look in my eyes, it would see you. Even in just a smile, they would feel Father's love. Even in just a smile, they would feel. Father's love. Today's scripture reading comes to us from the Acts of the Apostles. We're reading from Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day He was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom He had chosen. After His suffering, He presented Himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, He ordered them not to leave Jerusalem but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, He said, is what you have heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today is Ascension Sunday, which we, as we can tell from the scripture reading this morning, we stop and we observe and think about the significance of this moment. Uh, over the past several weeks, we have been looking at some of the moments that happened right after Pentecost in the second act. After Jesus had, was resurrected, what, what happened? What did his apostles do uh, during that time? And we have been looking at some points of reflection and action. And so the book of Acts, as we uh, began today, uh, it opens up like this. What we just heard, these are the opening words. After the resurrection, Jesus was with his disciples for a period of about 40 days and he talked to them about the kingdom of God. It's pretty clear, it's pretty clear that the way Jesus taught was organized around the purpose, not only of the kingdom, but his disciples' purpose in the kingdom. That was an orienting strategy in how he formed his disciples. Jesus rises from the dead and then it's almost like life goes on because Jesus reappears over the course of 40 days. I, I wonder, for me, as I wonder about during these 40 days after he was resurrected and after the disciples got over uh, the surprise of that, I'm curious if during those 40 days, if it ever felt like Everything was back to normal, just like it always was. Was it like that nothing had really changed? Did it seem like it always had? Hey, everybody, Jesus is back. We can get back to what we were doing, and, and He can go back to teaching us. 
and being with us, just like old times. I wonder if that's how they were thinking. Well, when we pick up in verse 6, something uh, interesting happens because the disciples have gathered together again. And they asked Jesus, they said, Is this the time you will restore the kingdom to the nation of Israel? Jesus tells them that essentially it's none of your business. But he says, when the gift of the Holy Spirit comes on you, you'll be empowered to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. It's not for you to know, he says. But he makes it pretty clear and pretty obvious. You see, they are still thinking in different terms of restoring the kingdom and the uprightness and the prominence of the nation of Israel. But Jesus is talking and thinking and trying to teach them about a much broader understanding, a much broader uh, idea or thought or plan that encompasses restoration and redemption for all, not just the nation of Israel. He says it will be in Jerusalem, which was where they were, because he, they were told to remain in Jerusalem. So he said it would be here in Jerusalem and all out throughout Judea and Samaria, which was the region in which they were located, and to the ends of the earth, which means anywhere your foot touches or your eye sees, you will be my witnesses in those places. You will be my witnesses, Jesus says. He said, it is not up to me. It is up to you. That's what he tells his disciples. It's up to you. In my first career out of college, I was, as many of you who know me know that I was a police officer for a few years. And as a police officer, in, at that day and time, and how uh, my experience there was that we began training and we went through a period of about five to six months of uh, academy training, but also we spend a tremendous amount of time with an FTO, what we call field training officer. Uh, and so basically you were put with a more experienced, uh, more responsible uh, e training officer who walked you through the paperwork, how to go about handling your calls, uh, and so on and so forth. Ultimately, the goal is that during the FTO program that you will uh, gain the experience and the um, you'll be empowered and gain the knowledge to move forward and to be on your own, functioning uh, on your, as, a, as an individual or independent unit to help cover uh, the, the assigned territory. Well, I had finally made it through the process, the FTO field training process. Uh, my first day of being quote unquote cut loose uh, for my first shift, I got my first call. I was in my car by myself. The call came on the radio. It was pretty simple. It was an easy one. It was kind of a, a soft pitch. Uh, it was to come assist direct traffic around a, a traffic accident. Yeah, I had two really great field training officers. Both of them were very different. They had a wonderful uh, experience. They had uh, many different, different gifts and talents and perspectives. Uh, they had different areas of, of expertise. And so I felt like during my time with them, I truly felt like I was ready for just about anything that could be thrown at me. I was so ready to be cut loose and on my own. And this simple call was not going to be a big deal at all. I pull up on the accident to direct traffic around this, around, uh, this busy intersection in which the cars were disabled. And I pulled up and it was, something funny happened. Because when I pulled up behind the accident, it's almost like I forgot everything that I had known and done for, for just a few minutes. I, I forgot everything, even where I needed to pull my car. You know, Mike Tyson is famous for a, a particular saying. He says, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. Well, I didn't really get punched in the face. It was more like a powder puff or a Nerf ball uh, hitting me in the face. It wasn't a punch, but I, I found myself uh, in awe and really unsure of everything that I had learned. What had come so easy when I had my field training officer in the seat next to me, all of a sudden I found myself in a moment of insecurity. Well, when Jesus ascends into heaven, he 
these guys are left staring up at the sky. And then we see these two men in white robes come and ask, why are you staring up into heaven? You know, I bet they felt a little bit like me. You know, they had been with Jesus, and then uh, Jesus had taught them, and they had been with Him, and then they got a little bit of overtime for those 40 days, some extra time with Jesus. And I bet they felt pretty comfortable and felt pretty ready for whatever Jesus needed to do from day to day. I bet they understood the concepts. They could do the work and were secure because they knew that Jesus was physically right there with them. But He just left. He just left. And He left us. I could imagine they were thinking. He, he left us. He said, uh, we asked Him, when are you going to restore the kingdom? And He says, it's not for you to know, but when the time comes, you will be my witnesses. Hmm. He just left us to do the work on our own, kind of. What do we do? What do we do now? What, what just happened? Where do we go now? And then these two people in white robes ask, why are you standing there staring into heaven? He's ascended. He's going to return. It's almost like, get it, snap out of it. He's been teaching. You even got some extra time. It's time. It's your turn. Get ready to go. It's up to you. The goal of discipleship, especially the way that Jesus went about it, it wasn't so that we will attend a service regularly or tote a Bible or claim that we are a Christian or adhere to a certain political ideology just to check some boxes. No, discipleship, it results in people who go and do what the Master does, and they are intent on becoming the type of person that the Master was. Disciples do the work that Jesus started. Jesus says, after He had done so much for them, He says, it's up to you. To His disciples, He says, now it's up to you. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in the regions of Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Locally, regionally, and abroad, you will be my witnesses. I'm reminded of a documentary that I saw maybe about 10 years ago. Uh, the documentary was entitled Waiting, for, Waiting on Superman. It was an aptly named and provocative documentary about uh, the crisis in public education then. Uh, and the idea, the title, which is really what I want to focus on, is that there's this thought that in some way and somehow there was going to be some magical superpower that could come in and fix everything. But what what that documentary re revealed was that, no, it, there, there wasn't one person. There wasn't a superhero who's going to come in and change everything. Actually, the problem was very complicated, so it was going to take many people to come and do many smaller things to help remedy the situation. There was no Superman coming to save the day. We all have a part to play to make this work. And we have to be careful as followers of Jesus that... that we don't take the same approach that we're waiting on our Superman, if you will. Or simply biding our time until Jesus returns, waiting on Jesus to do all the work. Jesus' response to His disciples was essentially say, it's up to you. And while there are uh, miraculous stories that abound in the work of Jesus and the early church and how the Holy Spirit continues to move, there are still miracles all of the work of disciples restoring the kingdom don't require miracles. We are called to live in a way where we might be glad or relieved when Superman shows up. But really, it's the Clark Kent work that has the greatest impact and makes the difference in our lives and in our world. 
It's up to you, Jesus says, to be my witnesses. Step into this territory, this space, into this life. Don't waste your time gazing up into heaven wondering when Jesus is going to do everything for you. Go, do what you know to do and what you've been called to do and what He has trained you and created you to do. Because every disciple is called and created to be a witness. Every disciple is Commission to go and make new disciples. Where you are and everywhere you go, this is what Jesus calls us to. Go be my witness. It's up to you. When we find ourselves in a situation where we have great leaders who teach us and invest in us and in our kingdom potential, the goal isn't to remain the student, to continue to have that person pouring into us for the rest of our life so that we can become a better and better student. No, the goal is that we would move from being the student to becoming a master or a teacher. Jesus says it's up to you. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. A few months ago, our oldest daughter uh, got her license to drive. I'll be honest, I was just a little worried. It was okay when she had her permit and we were riding in the car with her. Uh, she had gotten to where she could drive fairly well when her mom and I were in the car with her, of course. But to be honest, even though she was learning to drive and could drive, when we were in there with her, our presence still protected her a bit from the total responsibility and the total activity of what it means to drive a car. And when she started to drive on her own, of course, we took it slow. And, but once she started driving on her own and doing it a lot more, uh, she began to get more competent. And, and to get a little bit better at it. I, I found out a month or so later when I hopped back in the car with her, I found out for myself that, okay, she's, she's got it. She, she can drive. And she can do this. And a matter of fact, she's gotten better over this month of us not riding with her than she perhaps did when we were right there in the car with her. Discipleship's often that way. The goal of, dis of discipleship is that the student becomes the teacher for someone else who then goes and teaches others and helps others grow. And not only does that, that student become a teacher who teaches others, but that student becomes a teacher who teaches others. That's how this works in discipleship. Disciples make disciples who make disciples who make disciples, right? It's not just about taking the information and absorbing what's going on. It's about going and doing and putting that to use. So the question this morning, are you in your, in your discipleship journey, are you preparing to do your part? Jesus is saying it's up to you. Are you preparing to do your part? The disciples asked Jesus, is this the time that you will restore the kingdom to Israel? Jesus tells them, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. It's up to you. How are you prepared? How have you been prepared all throughout your life? your gifts and talents, your, your learning, your practice, your service. How, have, how has that shaped you and made you to be who you are today? And, and are you ready now to go and do and help others learn this way? Or are, are you still preparing, getting ready to step out there to help others in this way? What's your next step? What's your next step today? Because Jesus is telling us, that it's up to us to go and be His witnesses where we are, 
in our city, in our community, our neighborhood, our region, anywhere our feet touch and our eyes see. You will be my witnesses, Jesus says. So this morning, as we conclude our time, I want to give you a few moments. The two fundamental questions of discipleship are this. What is God saying to you? Discerning what is God saying to you right now this morning? And then how, or what are you going to do about it? And so we're going to take just a few moments to reflect, and I want to invite you to, uh, to pray on your own, to write down what it is that God is saying to you. Reflect, talk to somebody about what you feel God is saying to you, what you're being challenged to do. Then write it down. Decide what you're going to do about it. Make a plan. Find some people that will, that will support you and encourage you in that. And then begin doing it. So we're going to answer the question. We're going to reflect on these two questions. What is God saying to you? And what are you going to do about it? As we have connected together in worship this morning, we continue to listen to how God is leading us and influencing us and challenging us as we learn to grow to be His disciples who continue to, to worship, to watch over and invest in one another in the church and care for one another and continue to reach out, to share this life with those who need hope, who are living in absence of love of God and love of neighbor, who are not feeling empowered to live the life that God has created them to live. That is our role as disciples of Jesus. He says, it's up to you. So today, now you hear the call of Jesus, knowing that He walks with us every step of the way. He challenges us. But he also welcomes us into this relationship to help us learn his ways, to take on his teachings, which are maybe not easy, but they're simple. And as disciples, we are called to go and live this life so that we may witness to Jesus everywhere we go, in every relationship with every person that we encounter. May you go today, on this Ascension Sunday, to be witnesses of Jesus Christ here in our region and beyond. May the power of the Holy Spirit be with you, keep you, and comfort you in this journey. God bless you. Have a great week.